Hey there, this is Math 2, uh, Unit 8, Worksheet Number 2, looking at rational exponents today. So you began, first of all, with this graph here of y equals 2 to the x power. And they gave you some values of x to kind of plug in to show what the value was going to be. So if x was 3, for example, you would do 2 to the third power, which is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, which has definitely a value of 8. For the 2, you would say 2 squared, and that's going to be 2 times 2, which has a value of 4. For this one here, 2 to the first power is just simply 2. So, so far, that's pretty straightforward. And then we get to this one here, where it becomes 2 to the 1 half power. 2 to the 1 half power is really a way of saying that it is 2 to the first power, and it's the square root of that. So this part here on the denominator becomes our square root value. So the square root of two actually has a value of, if you use a calculator, about 1.4. I'd have to use a calculator for that, I just don't know that top of my head, okay? So two to the zero power though, and any of the zero power is always equal to one. And so we can see we're getting smaller as we get closer to the y-intercept there, right? There's one. And what we're at negative one, we talked about when we had that negative exponent, that means that this value needs to move downstairs into the denominator. Right, so that becomes one over two, and we rewrite that, which has a value of 0.5. So that's how you'd fill that one out there. Let's take a look then at the homework here, for example. Okay, this is kind of the key thing today, that if I have a value of like x to the one half, I can rewrite that as the square root of x. This is the x to the one, that's the one value, and that two is the square root value, okay? And what you'll see eventually later on, not in this lesson, but others, uh, actually in this lesson too, we can talk about if you have something to the one third power, that again, that x is still to the first, but because it's a third, that becomes a cubed root, okay? These are some things that you probably talked about in your class today that come up in today's activity as well. So here we go. Let's take a look at writing the expressions in radical form. Radical form means do it with a radical sign like that. So. This is gonna be k to the third. We're gonna keep that part together, okay? So this is k to the third. And this number here tells me what my radical is gonna be because it's a squared. I just do a square root like that and we're all done. That's all there is to it. Here, I have three squared, okay? So we could do three squared. And this value tells me what my root's gonna be. In this case here, I'm gonna do a fifth root like that. And I could leave it like that if we chose to, or I could then work that out and say it's the same as the fifth root of three squared is nine. But I think they really just want you to leave it like this for now, just so you can see how that gets separated apart. For number four, same idea. My x is still x to the first. I don't need to write the one, but I can if it helps you out. You know, there it is. But my denominator there in the exponent tells me that this is a cubed root. So I write it with a three in the radical space there. For number five, we wanna express this in exponential form. So now I need to go the other direction. So I have my, my things with the, underneath the radical, it's a two x, so I'll leave that as a two x, and that's really two x to the first, and I can put it in parentheses to keep it all together, okay? And then we know because it's a radical, it's to the first power, and this is just a square root, so it's one over two, okay? For number six, we see it's f squared. So we're gonna keep the f here. The squared part becomes my numerator. And this on the outside because it's cubed becomes my denominator in my exponential value. So this is f to the 2 thirds value. And this is something that you just have to work on so you remember how this works. It just comes up again and again, okay? For this one, we're gonna write 5x cubed. I'm gonna write it like this first of all. And I'm gonna put this in parentheses because this is what I have so far underneath here, okay? I'm not gonna to try to break that apart. I'm gonna keep it together, 5x cubed. And then what I know is that's to the first power over, am I out here what I have? A fourth root like that. And I'd leave it just like that. 5x cubed in parentheses to the one fourth power. All right, for number 18, or sorry, 18, <laughs> eight and 19. For the next part, so to evaluate each expression. So evaluate means we wanna work this out and solve this and see what we come up with. Okay, so let's take, for example, real quick, let's pretend that I had uh, the square root of nine, right? 
If I have something like the square root of 9, because it's a square root value, I don't need to put a 2 there. But it means I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to get to 9. And when I have that, 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 that value, 3 and 3, when I have a cluster of three things, then that means that it can be taken to the outside of the radical. If I have two matching numbers there, 3 and 3, and they match, because it's a square root to the second power, I can then put it outside the radical, and it's going to simply equal 3. I share that because when I go over here to 16 to the third and or 3 fourths power, what that means is that I have 16 underneath here, underneath the radical sign, but my radical sign is now a fourth. Okay, and this is to the third power there. So think about this. Can I take the 16 and break it apart to find a, not a pair, because that's a square root, but four numbers that get you there? So for the 16, I can do 2 times 8. 8 can be 2 times 4, and 4 can be 2 times 2. So in this case here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my cluster of four numbers, which means I could take that 16. 16 to the fourth, or with a root 4, 16, is going to be equal to 2, right? Because I got a cluster of 2. Now that 2, though, still needs to be cubed. So now I'm going to bring that cubed over here and make it 2 cubed. And 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. And that becomes my evaluation of that expression. All right. Let's take a look at another one because it's a little different, I know. This is 25. And we have a cubed here. And we know it's a squared root because it's just a, over 2, right? So square root. Well, probably you know square root of 25 is 5. All right, but I still have that cube that has to be attached to it as well. So 5 cubed is 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125 there. A little more straightforward, but what you're seeing is we're just kind of waiting on doing the um, exponential part there. We're taking care of the radical part first and making sure that this cube gets attached to where, or where it needs to get attached to. So over here, same idea. We have 256. And this is the fourth root of that, and the whole thing is cubed still. So there's my cubed, and there's my four, which goes there. So now I want to break this apart, and I know that I can do four times 64. I know that I can do here eight and eight, and I know that this can become a four and a two, and a four and a two. And of course, two plus two is four, or two times two is four. So actually I have what? One, two, three, four. I have four fours inside of 256. So the fourth root of 256 is actually equal to four, but I have to keep that cubed there. So we put that up on top. So four cubed is gonna be 64, and that's how that one works there. Let's take a look at number 11. For number 11, this is the first power, but it's a sixth root. I'm not sure how you'd say it exactly. So 64 to the first power and sixth root there. So we're looking for is a number that can go in there, uh, multiply by itself six times to get to 64. Well, let's break it down two and 32. 32 becomes two and 16. 16 becomes two and eight. Eight becomes two and four. And four becomes two and two. I count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what do you know? There are six twos inside of 64, nothing left over. So the whole thing is equal to two, all right? And I do two to the first power, but that's still equal to two. Number 13 here, this has 64 to the negative five, six. Well, what does that mean? That means it's gonna be one over, in this case here, 64. And we have this sixth root again, and that's all to the fifth power. Okay, do I know what 64 sixth root's gonna be? Yep, I just did it number 11. That's gonna be equal to two, I just did it. So it's one over two, keep your fifth, to the fifth power. And to the fifth power is gonna be one over 32. So two times two times two times two times two equals 32. All right, let's go back side for a few more of these. Number 15, all right, it's a negative two thirds. So we're gonna do one over, in this case here, 27. And the root's gonna be a cubed root. 
and then we'll end up squaring it. So that's myself, 27 becomes 3 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, and what do you know, do I have a cluster of 3 numbers there? Sure do. So the cube root 27 is actually equal to 3, so this becomes 1 over 3, and then there's my squared value, moving that over, and then 3 squared is equal to 9. So I end up with 1 9. 17, negative 27, and we have 2 to the third power, so that becomes a cube root again, right? There's 27 to make a negative, and the whole thing is going to be squared in the end, right? So 27, we've already decided that the cube root of 27 can be 3, right? But this is a negative 27. Well, what if you broke it down into negative 3 times 9, okay? But can I get a nine from a negative three times a negative three? Sure I can. Negative times a negative is a positive. So I can actually end up with three negative threes. And then I have to square that because of the squared value there still. And negative three squared is gonna be equal to nine. Number 19, same type of idea. I have the cubed root of negative 125 to the fourth power. We've done this one before, so we know that this breaks apart into negative 5, 25, and 25 can become a negative 5, negative 5. So the cube root of negative 125 can be, and actually is, negative 5, still to the fourth power. So negative 5 to the fourth power is going to be 625. Let's move down to the next two sections. It says to simplify and leave answer in simplified radical form when necessary, all variables represent positive numbers. All right, so we have eight x to the fourth to the one half, which means the square root of the whole thing. All right, that's what it means. So here's eight x to the fourth, and I could think about it being to the first power, but it doesn't matter, but the two means it's the square root of that. Okay, so let's break this down. So eight becomes four and two, and four becomes two and two. This is a square root, so I'm looking for clusters of two. So there's one cluster of two. For the x to the fourth, I'm looking for clusters of two again. So x to the fourth becomes x, 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 x. So here's a cluster of two, and here's a cluster of two. These little clusters all go on the outside of the radical now. So I have a two on the outside. I have an x on the outside, all right? There's the two. Here's the x, and here's the other x. Left on the inside, though, is still this 2. It didn't get a partner, so it's still on the inside of the radical there. So x times x is x squared, so this becomes 2 x squared root 2 for my solution. Okay? I just took each part in here and broke it down to find out can I get a square, can I square any part of that? And then what was left over was just that one little 2 right there. Number 23, again, they have the same base. So when they have the same base, we need to add the exponential value. So let's do this here. What is 1 fifth plus 3 tenths? To add those, like fractions, I have to have a common denominator. So let's make this one equal to 10. And to get there, it's times 2. So multiply the tops times 2. So that becomes 2 tenths. I'm going to cross that off so I don't get confused. So 2 tenths plus 3 tenths equals 5 tenths, which reduces to a half. So now let's take that exponent and put it on top of our 3. So 3 to the half power. I want to write them in simplified radical form. So that's exponential form. So that becomes square root of 3. Why? Because it's 3 to the first power and the 2 becomes the square root. For 25, it says to leave the answer in simplified radical form necessary. You want to simplify this here? So let's rewrite them, okay? This becomes 7 to the half power times 7 to the, there's my numerator, 3, and the denominator is 2, 3 halves. Same base, so the base stays the same, 7. Because the denominator is the same, I can do 1 half plus 3 over 2, and 1 half plus 3 over 2 is 4 over 2. And I can reduce 4 over 2 is the same as 2. So your fraction rules are just happening way up here now. 
and seven squared becomes 49, and that's it for number 25. For 27, similar idea here, I have x to the fourth, okay? And that's gonna be to the, here's a, like a fifth root, right? That's to the one fifth power. What do we do when we have exponents? We multiply it, we exponent to an exponential power, we multiply them. So that becomes x to the one fourth times one fifth power, which becomes x to the one twentieth power. And because I want radical form, that becomes the twentieth root of x, right? Because that's my root value right there. That's it for today. Hope it helps you out, and we'll see you next time.